Hey everyone, Mike here. I'm going to go over the um, the berry that I put together and uh, shared on a few of the uh, Facebook groups. And it's pretty easy to tie. I'm using um, some pretty much just craft materials and a little bit of um, uh, ice dubbing. And you can actually make your own type dubbing. Uh, and I can get into that in, in another video at another time. But um, I just wanted to show you real quick how to load up your string of, um, of beads. And that would be these right here. Loading those up because that's what you need. It's about, it's just over three inches long. It needs to be around three inches plus up to maybe three and a half inches to get the wraps on. Um, hopefully I didn't use the one that's loose here. I didn't. And okay, because I've got these already put together so that I don't have to go through um, each step and load the whole thing up because it is a little bit time consuming. Not super co time consuming, but um, it, it is con time, time consuming. This is what we're going to end up with right here is a berry um, that has a stem on it and uh, the uh, beads. Uh, the seed beads wrapped around the uh, around some ice dubbing. And then I'll finish it up with some uh, UV cement. You can use just head cement if you want to, but um, I I think it, um, it it will work better if you use um, UV uh, a UV finish. Okay, so anyway, what we're going to do is is I'm going to show you on just one piece of string right here. Uh, it's a, um, let, me, let me go through the, uh, the parts on what it is that we're putting together here. Um, I have got a, um, well, let's start with the thread. I'm using a braided three-aught th uh, thread. I mean, you don't have to have a, you know, a flat thread or, um, you know, any kind of really thin. This, this black braided uh, fly tying thread I got through Orvis. And it's a it's a, it's a very very strong strong thread, and I, I like that for everything that I do because um, I, I don't do delicate little flies that require you know one little wrap to um, to make sure that you don't get too much buildup on the fly and, and make it look kind of kind of gaudy. Um, what we want to do is put something together that's um, on, on this on this fly. And make it look uh, look decent. Make it look like a berry, so that the um, the carp. I would imagine. Typically, I did have one guy tell me that um, he caught some steelhead and sliced a steelhead open. He said there were some berries inside it. Um, that sounds to me like a typical fish. I mean, fish will, I think, eat just about anything at at a given time. Um, anyway. So let's go over real quick the um, the materials that I'll be using. I, I just I mean this is the tying thread right here, the three aught uh, black. And then I use a um, a, a scud hook. Uh, it's a uh, six aught scud hook. Uh, it's about the right size I think for the uh, for this one particular fly here. I use this 10 pound dark braided line, which is what I use to thread the, the beads on. And then the beads are simply just a uh, glass bead and they're called uh, seed beads. And um, I got these at, at Hobby Lobby. And I actually have, the, this, this dark red here would be the uh, primary color and then I'll throw I'll throw on some uh, some brighter red, and then I'll I'll throw in a couple black here and there on the thread, so that when you wrap it on, it uh, it it gives the uh, gives the fly a much more real realistic look. Um, and then I use this uh, rubber material that's typically used for legs, and I cut it pretty short, uh, just over an inch probably. Um, and this is a piece that I have ready for uh, when, when we get ready to tie this fly. And then I use a, uh, I use a piece of this uh, two millimeter craft foam and I cut it about, uh, I would say three, three sixteenths of an inch 
um, wide. Then I also use a uh, an ice dubbing. I use the uh, the the peacock the peacock or the UV black. It, it both of them work well. You can use both of them together if you want. The ice dubbing will disappear. So let's uh, show you how I get the first bead onto the line, and that's simply by taking my 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 uh, line the 10 pound test and placing it on top of one of the beads because the beads are typically all facing up. When you pour them in, they'll just automatically face up. They're like micro donuts. And you, you, when you put the, the uh, line down on top of it, it flips up and flips right onto your thread just like that. And then I'll run that thread through about so far, giving me about a, I don't know, a little over a three inch uh, tag right there. And then I'll simply bring the thread around. Make sure I have this in the uh, video. Bring the thread around and then re-thread through the bead again. Pull that out um, until I have myself a loop there. Then I'll take the tag in, run it through the loop, and through the loop, like so, and then pull it down tight, and that locks that locks that be, that will lock that bead in, into place. Um, you can run you can to give it a little bit of insurance. Uh, you can throw a little bit of uh, UV finish on it. and that'll help lock it into place. Then once you have your tag in and the long end that you're going to feed your uh, beads on, all you do is simply capture beads, uh, one right after the other. This is kind of tedious and it's a little bit time consuming, but you know, with some practice you can get fast and it may, you might be able to make one of these in a a bead of a string stringed bead in I don't know a couple of minutes maybe maybe a little more maybe a little less depending on <clears throat> your skills and then you just run it all the way down to the last bead that you have on there like so and then uh, you just fill, continue filling that bead up and here's one that I've already got full but what I want to do is um, is show you how to lock in the last bead so that they don't um, fly around on you as you're trying to tie this strand of beads in. So you're going to want to do the same thing you did on the first one and that's run a loop through the last bead just like that. Make sure you pull it tight on the end of the loop that it, that goes all the way to the, to the other tag end. Pull it tight, hold it, bring it down and then run the uh, tag in through that loop again. In fact, you might go ahead and want to do a double take. Continue holding this right here and then lock it down. Now you might get a little bit of a gap in there, but that's okay. That's not going to hurt anything. Uh, and that's what you want to end up with right there. That's the string of beads that you're going to use to apply to, the, uh, to your fly. So the first step that you want to do on this is to is uh, apply your thread, and I start it at the right at right behind the hook and run it run it all the way to the back. Uh, I don't know, a little bit past the uh, point of the hook probably, and cut it off. And we'll take our little piece of rubber here, put it on, and you might want to go ahead and cut that off to where it's about a quarter of an inch to maybe five sixteenths of an inch um, from the bend of the hook there just like that so now you're going to want to tie in one of the tag ends 
bring your thread about halfway onto the hook and then run your tag in, one of the tag ends on and pull the pull the tag in until your bead is right right where the um, where the end of your thread is where you got it wrapped just like that and then wrap it back Now, but now that we have this tied on here, what I want to do is take a piece of this um, foam, and the only thing this foam does is it's building up a body, so you don't have to use a bunch of the bead, too many of the beads. So it's just a simple matter of just like that. You don't need to bring the uh, the foam up too close to the eye. You don't want to do that. You want to have have room to be able to tie everything in, just like so. Pull on the craft foam, cut, and that way it'll uh, cut it really nice and even and flush right down there on the on the hook. Okay, so now that's the craft foam. Now we want to add some ice dubbing to just cover the, the uh, foam. You can put this on with whatever technique that you like and you use. Just add the dubbing to your thread. And wrap. Don't worry about all this bunched up and sticking out, out there. You actually kind of want that. Now you're going to want to run your beads forward. You might want to take a look at the direction that you want to wrap these because actually you can do this too. This kind of helps on the, uh, on the start is get this bead started. Get the bead started and then wrap it down just a little bit. That kind of helps. Oops, that's what you're trying to avoid right there, which you'll take care of here in a few minutes. But right now, um, we're just wanting to get it. Oh, for Pete's sakes. Get it wrapped on there. Okay. Okay, so we get to that point there. Just grab the beads with your thread, like so. <clears throat> then what you're gonna wanna do, get your thread up over and out of the way, bring your tray over and cut above the one that you have secured and all the excess beads will fall down into the tray. Just like that. Okay, so. Now we'll want to go ahead and get that tag in secured in. And you can wrap right back down over top of the beads. It's not going to hurt anything. In fact, you want it because it'll kind of help hold the beads in place so that they don't shift around on you. <clears throat> okay, so now what I'm going to want to do is add a little bit more of this ice dubbing on here and uh, what we're doing with this is we're going to run it between the strands of beads and the thread will help lock that down into place let's go ahead and right there and go through the go through what we just um, 
There we go. Okay. Um, then you can use whatever kind of finishing tool. You can do it by hand. You can use a whip finisher. However you want to finish it off. And then I use a little brush to kind of pull those ice dubbing strands out more, kind of more evenly onto the fly. Looks like I pulled a little bit of thread out there too. That's all right. And then um, we'll go through and we'll trim all that up just down to the, uh, down to the beads. And then I'll throw on some uh, some UV finish here, and towards the back I'll put some on as well, and that'll kind of help lock everything into place, and it will give it kind of a full look between the beads and that ice dubbing, um, and then just uh, use your UV light and lock everything in. Having a uh, rotary vise makes all of this stuff so much easier when you're tying your flies. Um, you can do it without the rotary vise, but it, the rotary really helps facilitate the, um, the ap application of some of the techniques that you'll use. And then um, I'll go back through again when that locks in because all, all those fibers now are sticking out and kind of locked into place sticking out and I'll just go through and trim all of it up. And let's just take a look at the finished product there. That um, it's probably not one of the prettiest ones I've done but it's just going to take some practice. It's, I mean, I've only done half a dozen of these, maybe. And uh, any time that I try to um, give instructions on a video, um, it, you know, I get distracted by certain things. But hopefully, you get the whole idea of what where we're going here. I mean, it's the the idea is to have fun, uh, be creative, use some materials that I showed you in this video, and um, you know, throw some stuff on a hook and and uh, see what you can come up with. I'd like to see, you know, some of your ties on this pattern. Uh, some of you guys are, you know, way better than I am at tying, and you know, maybe you can help us with a, uh, you know, a better technique and some materials. It's going to be kind of hard, I think. I mean, this, these uh, glass beads, these little seed beads, uh, tied on here like this with some of that ice dubbing, it just it just makes these things pop and I'm pretty sure that um, that these are going to be pretty dynamite when I go chase some carp this year I you know everybody's telling me you gotta have a mulberry bush or a tree that uh, you cast these under and my bet is that um, I can cast this to a carp um, and there not be a mulberry tree in sight and if it's presented right it you know they're going to hit i mean i know carp are pretty finicky and smart to fish according to a lot of guys that uh, fish them on a regular basis but um it, it's just a fish and i i'll have some video this summer catching some i know i know i will if i want to catch something i i usually do this is mike until the next video tie it sling it and get high on the tug because we all know that is the drug.